Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 50. We see an army of Tesla getting ready for an invasion in China. Tesla will have full self-driving this year, but maybe not on roads. And have you ever seen a Tesla snowmobile? Well, watch this new show when you will. And Tesla also released a brand new product. To find out what it is, again, you have to watch this new show. So let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. And Tesla continues to dominate in many countries in Europe. And as I showed you last week, Tesla Model 3 is dominating December in Norway, selling almost twice as much as the closest competitor, the ID3, that has been Norway's top BEV since September 2020. It was considered the country's new favorite EV, considering that it has started to gain some serious ground on the Audi e-tron, which is the most popular electric car in Norway in 2020. But it is not only in Norway, here in Europe Tesla is doing very well. But in Switzerland, Tesla Model 3 did not just become the best-selling EV, but the best-selling car in December. Again, nearly twice the sales of the runner-up, and the only other EV in the top 10 is the little Zoe. And in Germany, we can also see that Tesla is growing like crazy compared to last year, and pretty much everyone else is down year over year. The best-selling EV in Europe was the little Renault Zoe, with 114% growth, nice, selling 115,888 EVs in 2020. And still, people are trying to make this sound bad for Tesla. But they don't even have a factory in Europe and are still not selling Teslas in many countries in Europe. But the Tesla Model 3 still managed to be the second best-selling EV in Europe. And again, we can cherry-pick any country we want to to show how good Tesla is doing or how bad Tesla is doing. But combined sales numbers from the whole world are hard to cherry-pick. And then we see just how dominating Tesla Model 3 was. Tesla sold about 350,000 Model 3s in 2020. This is more than three times the sales of Renault Zoe. That is actually more than the Zoe has ever sold, not just in 2020. The ID3 sold about 50,000. Still just started in September, so very impressive, but not close to Tesla 350,000. The Audi e-tron that beat the Tesla Model 3 in Norway in 2020, yes, but again, only sold about 50,000 combined on a global scale. So again, when we don't cherry pick the numbers, but just look at the combined global sales, we can see just how dominating Tesla Model 3 was in 2020. Going to be exciting to see how many EVs the old manufacturer will be able to produce here in 2021 because Tesla will probably be able to produce about eight to 900,000 Model 3 and Ys combined from Shanghai, Fremont, Berlin and Texas factories. I don't think anyone else will be able to make that many EVs and Tesla will probably just widen the gap here in 2021. But time will tell. But I will come out soon with a new video where I dive a bit deeper into the numbers of 2021, both for Tesla and the competition, so remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And the pilot project in Fremont factory is speeding along. And these projects are just so important for the near-term future, because here we have the 4680 cell being produced and has been for about half a year, and the Fremont factory should be able to produce about 10 gigawatt hours here in 2021. And this might sound like a small number, but it's actually about 25% of Tesla's annual battery production in 2020. So just this little tiny pilot project built at the Fremont factory is going to add 25% more batteries to Tesla's annual production. It really shows just how little footprint Tesla's new battery production line has and what we have in store in the very near future because both Giga Berlin and Giga Texas will start battery production at a much larger scale and both probably this year. Then it's just a question of how fast can they scale up. 
And the other pilot line is the Giga casting machine that is making Model Y's underbody pieces. And we have already seen Model Y's on the street with these rear end single casting pieces. So this is no longer just some pilot project. They have got this technology down. So as soon as the Giga Berlin is up and running, they are going to spit these casting pieces out of the eight Giga casting machines they are installing at the Giga Berlin. I'm not sure if everyone still gets how huge this is going to be. With the Model Y coming out of the Giga Berlin, built with the new casting pieces and with the new battery to structure underbody with the new 4680 battery cell. So much savings for Tesla, so much new technology packed into one product, which of course can delay the project, but all this should still come out this year. This is just nuts and it's coming out in Europe. Meanwhile, GM shows off yet another CGI EV, the Cadillac Selectec, that is coming out in 2025. Yeah, Tesla is just so far ahead and accelerating in 2021 like we have never seen before. Meanwhile, GM is so far behind they can't even see the finish line. Hell, they are so far behind they can't even see the start line. The line is a dot to you. And the Model Y is awarded a 5 star safety rating in all categories. No surprise here, safety does come first for Tesla and is known for their very safe cars. And all Tesla's cars has got 5 star safety rating in every category. Yes, large crumble zone, rigid body structure and low center of gravity really does make a big difference. And the Model Y comes with great performance, range, storage and much more. Yes, the Tesla Model Y is going to dominate in 2021. And speaking of safety, Tesla just released their safety report for Q4 2020. And the main takeaway is of course that driving on the highway with full self driving on is many times more safe than driving without. Yes, these kind of statistics are why I'm still very bullish on full self driving and it being approved faster than people think because we can already see it is many times safer and will save life. And it's a didn't just give Tesla five star safety rating. They also cleared Tesla in an investigation over claims of sudden acceleration that some drivers claimed. The petition was originally opened in December 19 by Mr. Brian Spark. Spark requested that Nitsa recalled all Tesla Model X, X and Model 3 vehicles produced from 2013 to the present due to sudden unintended acceleration. But after reviewing data from Tesla, yes, they have all the data of what's going on in the car, Nitsa failed to find any evidence that would support these sudden acceleration claims. Don't know why it had to take this long to come to this conclusion when Tesla has all the data about their cars, but it of course ended as expected. Brian Sparks claims were false and another FUD myth about Tesla killed. And the Tesla Model Y will very soon start its domination in China. The parking lot is just filling up with an army of Model Ys. A Tesla tsunami is coming for China in 2021 and the delivery of the Model Y will start tomorrow on the 18th of January according to sources familiar with the matter. And if you hear someone like Gordon Johnson talking about no growth in the market share in China for Tesla, well it it's all a lie. Just take a look at the numbers for the passenger vehicle market in China. Tesla is up 245% in 2020. Call me crazy, but I would call that a success. But it's not only Model Ys in the parking lot. It is also filling up with right hand drives Model 3s that is getting ready to take on Asia and probably Australia. And Ray for Tesla also tweeted that the made in China Model 3 performance is also getting some crazy momentum and is sold out for February. So Tesla just seems to be exploding in China. Going to be very exciting to see the Q1 numbers for China. And the Model S and X are disappearing. 
Yes, the Tesla Model S and X are disappearing from showrooms, further hinting at the coming refresh. And we might even have gotten a confirmation on the refresh Model S and X. Twitter Harshal did tweet this. Refresh is confirmed according to my sources working at the Fremont. February 1st week start of production for Refresh Model S and March 1st week start of production of Refresh Model X. This does make a lot of sense when we combine that with Tesla just announced that, that Tesla's earnings call will be held on the 27th of January. So my bet is that Tesla will reveal the new refreshed Model S and X at the earnings call. So put that date in your calendar. This will be a great earnings call where Tesla will also come with some targets for 2021. I think they will say something like 840 or 850,000 deliveries in 2021. Again, sandbagging the numbers, I believe they will produce about 1 million cars in 2021. And Tesla will have full self-driving this year. But maybe not on the roads. The Las Vegas Convention and Visitor Authority board agreed to pay the Boring Company up to $6.25 million for operation and management of the Las Vegas Convention Center Loop, beginning on February the 1st through June the 30th, 2022. Tesla vehicle with drivers will move people through the tunnels at the beginning of the system's operation. However, the board expects autonomous operation with Tesla cars no later than December 31th 2021 and has agreed to improve a renegotiation fee once the shift takes place. And we do know just how easy it is for Tesla cars to drive on a highway. So to be driving in a tunnel with only one way and no traffic should be very easy for Tesla's full self-driving. And a big advantage of using cars and not big parts with a lot of people is that you can just get in your car and drive straight to your destination. You don't have to stop at every station on the way. You just get into your Tesla cab and can then drive maybe 100 miles an hour or more underground with no traffic. You'll be able to get anywhere in Vegas in a matter of minutes when this whole tunnel system is done. Unlike the Las Vegas Convention Center Loop, the Las Vegas Loop will be fully founded and operated by the Boring Company. The Boring Company will also own the tunnel system it builds. This is a very smart move from the Boring Company. Then the cities it will be digging tunnels for will not have to pay anything to get this tunnel system. The Boring Company will pay for that but will then also own the whole system, maybe apart from the station, and then earn a lot of money on transporting people around in these tunnels. And at some point, actually within this year, the Boeing company don't even have to pay drivers anymore. I see a very bright future ahead for the Boeing company that will also benefit Tesla. Very cool. And this is yet another futuristic thing that will be real in 2021. This year will truly be kickstarting the next decade of innovations. And Tesla launched a brand new product. The Tesla Solar Inverter. It's more exciting than it sounds. In the realm of Tesla announcement, this one might go under the radar for the general public. Nowhere near as flashy and exciting as a new car. But don't let that fool you into thinking this announcement is insignificant. By building their own solar inverters, Tesla has the potential to drive the cost of their solar even lower. And they are already the industry leader in cost per watt. And when will these inverters be available? Well, they already are. But why do all this for just an inverter? At this point, an inverter is the only major piece of the solar plus storage installation that Tesla doesn't currently produce in-house. They already manufacture solar panels, both the solar roof and regular solar panels. They already manufacture battery with the power walls, as well as the components that link the battery to the rest of the solar panel system, like the gateway and the automatic transfer switch. This means that by manufacturing their own inverters, Tesla has now brought all of their solar plus storage system under one roof. And this being tested, the inverters can of course get an over-the-air update. <laughs> nice. And when we take into account that Tesla doesn't spend any money on advertisement and now have everything under one roof, Tesla would probably stay the cheapest solar and storage system in the industry. Again, Tesla is forcing other companies to copy Tesla if they want to compete. This combined with Tesla has been spending years trying to 
perfect the installation of the solar roof so an average house can get a solar glass roof in just one day. And we did just see a great example of a 12 kilowatt solar roof being put up in just one day. And Tesla owners of Austin just shared a video showing just how simple Tesla solar roof is to put up. Yes, Tesla will really be able to spit out solar roof like crazy now. Again, yet another side of Tesla's business that is going to explode in 2021. And NIO held their big NIO day where they showed off a lot of new stuff. One of the things they showed off was the new EV, the NIO ET7. It will be jam packed with sensors and cameras. Unfortunately, it does show the car comes with three horns. The meaning of Triceratops is three horned face. But other than that, it looks nice and all the specs looks very good. Nothing revolutionary. The 1000 kilometers they talk about is of course in the NEDC, not even damn close. That will be about 770 kilometers EPA, about 480 miles. But they get this by putting a 150 kilowatt battery pack in the car. So the efficiency is nothing special. Still about 3.2 miles per kilowatt, like most other EVs, but Tesla's Model Y is about 4.3 miles per kilowatt. So nothing that the others haven't done when it comes to range. I have not yet done a deep dive into Nero's new car, but their car in general seems really nice and great performance and specs all around and are now coming to Europe. So they are definitely one to keep an eye on. Also because the Chinese government has already bailed them out of bankruptcy once and will probably do it again if they need to. So I think Neo is here to stay. I am in doubt about the battery swap system though, because it just seems unlikely this is going to work when we have millions of EVs on the road. It is much easier when you have only delivered 75,000 cars in a year to also offer swap station. But Tesla will probably deliver 1 million cars in 2021. If they should have a swap station to all these cars, the amount of batteries they would need would probably be twice as many as today. This will mean that Tesla will only be able to produce half as many cars because they are also battery constrained like everyone else. So I don't believe this will work on a large scale because we have also already seen people waiting a long time at the swap station because they can only handle one car at a time. So if five cars shows up at the same time, the last one still have to wait about 25 minutes. And that is if all the battery packs in the system are not used up and they are all charging because then you also have to wait for that so your five minute swap can easily become a very long waiting time and the cost of the station are much greater than the supercharges that can be put up everywhere and they also need some staff at the stations as well so to me this just seems like a very complicated solution that Tesla has been looking into but they saw that customers didn't want to swap battery packs and the supercharges is getting faster and faster so it's just a matter of time before we can get like 200 miles of range in five minutes and then new will just have a lot of expensive swapping station nobody wants to use here in Denmark we have actually tried it before with battery swap stations with a company called better place that had a fully functional battery swap network in little Denmark back in 2012 but they did go bankrupt I also think the timing had something to do with that they were too early out out before EVs was really a big thing. But back then the charging speed here in Denmark was a max of 50 kilowatt charging. So it would make more sense back then than it does today. So all in all, I don't really believe in the battery swap technology. It just seems too complicated and too expensive and will need too many battery packs. But I do believe Neo is here to stay. Also because even though the battery swap could be a very expensive mistake, the Chinese government will have their back. And again, Neo is more a threat to the old automakers than Tesla, but they still have a long way to go. As Elon said, prototypes are easy, volume production is hard, positive cash flow is excruciating. And meanwhile, Tesla just opened their 5000 supercharger in mainland China. Yes, Tesla is not slowing down with their charging station, quite the opposite. They just finished the build of the 5000th supercharger in China. Tesla now has 700 charging stations in China, but if we only go back two months, they only had 500 stations. 
so Tesla charging network grew at 30% in just two months. And this will only ramp up as Tesla start production of the chargers in Shanghai any day now. In the new factory where they will produce as much as 10,000 chargers a year. Yes, Tesla's ramp of charging station is just going to leave everyone else in the dust. And especially when you know most of all these chargers is going to be 250 kilowatt chargers. Just amazing job. Tesla. And let's squeeze the last short news topics into this show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. And yeah, someone made a Tesla snowmobile. <laughs> That's just crazy. And Denmark leads the way when it comes to putting zero emission urban buses on the streets in Europe, with 78% of new vehicles being electric, according to the latest data from Green NGO Transport and Environment, closely followed by Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Volkswagen did also have a great EV year in 2020. Their EV sales increased with more than 200%, with a total of 232,600 EV sold in 2020. Tesla still dominated with more than twice the sales, but still good numbers for the Volkswagen Group. But I still think Tesla will just widen the gap in 2021, but time will tell. Wetbush just raised their target for the Tesla stock to street high $950. Like Wetbush put it, right now the EV market, we believe it's Tesla's world and everyone else is just paying rent. Yeah. I get a lot of questions on trading and the stock market, but I don't really trade. I just hold a small position of Tesla stock and if I had more money to invest, well, this would be me. XL Energy will deploy approximately 20,000 electric vehicles charging stations at residential, commercial and public sites across Colorado, under a $110 million plan formally approved by the Colorado Public Utilities Commissions this week. Very nice. And Elon teases with a little tweet about AI Day may be coming later this year. Just like we had Battery Day in 2020 and Autonomy Day in 2019, 2021 might be the year of AI day. And it is confirmed that Tesla is coming to India. Elon even confirmed it on Twitter, tweeting as promised. Tesla is in talks with officials to open store, office, R&D center and possibly a factory for production. And India could be a very good market for Tesla's energy business as well going to be very exciting. The International Space Station will get some new solar panels and not surprisingly, NASA has chosen SpaceX for the task of getting the new solar panels up there, on board the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft on one of the next cargo missions to the ISS. And while we are waiting for the Starship SN9 to take off, John Krauss took this amazing shot of the SN9. Even Elon replied back to John, nice shot. Indeed. And let's take a look at the Texas Giga Factory that is just shooting up faster than anything I have seen before. Here is Jeff Roberts' flyover from the 14th of January, speed it up. And the coolest van on the planet we have all been waiting for since 2017 when it was announced the ID Buzz is getting delayed. At least in the US, as the American CEO said, it will not start production before 2023. Ah, too bad, because this is going to be one cool electric van. And a funny little note connecting the dots tweeted about a silly walk lane and asked Elon Musk to make a silly walk lane in Giga, Texas. Extremely efficient CapEx, only take two signs to raise a million smiles. And Elon replied, sure. <laughs> so cool, Giga Texas is, in many ways, going to be something really special. Elon Musk did also tweet about his son saying he feels like 2021 will be a good year. Elon agrees and says, let's make it so. Couldn't agree more. And before we end off with a bit of fun to make 2021 more fun as well, I just want to make a quick shout out to my news patrons and members of this channel. Victor van Dijk. Stephen Smith, Michael Vincent, Ulrich Losa, Stephen Fisher, C. Nile, Ashley Lynn, Harry Bidensky, Axel Conradi, Barbecue Face, and I thank you for watching, members Mahito Komoto, Jiri Dravonowski, Eric Funk, 
Bill Holder, Graham Brown, Carsten Hench, Matt Miller. Thank you so much for your support, guys. As you know, I'm doing all this by myself, so your support means the world to me. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Tesla owner of Silicon Valley posted this funny tweet. Just a perfect picture of Tesla shorts of 2020. And that's all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. If you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of the show and get your shout out here on this channel. You can also become a member of Best in Tesla YouTube channel and get shout outs and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. But going forward, I will make more videos available for patrons and members only. So don't miss out. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news and more in there as it comes out. And check out the merch store to support this show and get some merchandise. And now it's also possible to support this show without buying anything, becoming a member or a Patreon. There is a link to a donation option in the show notes. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. Model Y and the Model Y is what? And the Model Y is awarded 5 star rating. And the Model Y is f and the Model Y is awarded five a five star rating. And the Model Y is awarded a five star rating. It's five star safety rating. <laughs> and the Model Y is awarded a five star safety rating in all categories. <laughs>